How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Mr. Donnie here once again. This time we're going to take a look at empirical formula from analysis when you have a carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen containing compound. So how do you figure out how much oxygen there was when you kept adding it, right? We have combustion analysis and we kept adding oxygen. How do you know how much oxygen you had to start with? Well, our objectives, again, kind of repeating myself, determine the empirical formula from combustion analysis for compounds containing carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. All right, so let's take a quick review over what is combustion analysis. So we have a sample that we put in a furnace and we heat it up. We get it really, really hot and we're adding excess oxygen to that so that as we're heating it, we're combusting it. It's going to react with that oxygen. So the exhaust enters chamber one where H2O is absorbed. And, you know, the mass of this is going to go up and the change in mass is going to equal the mass of the H2O that was produced. Then the rest of the exhaust is going to go through a next, the next chamber, another chamber, where the CO2 is absorbed. So again, the mass is going to go up, and that change in mass is going to tell us the amount of CO2 produced. So from that, we can go, hey, if I know how much water was made, I can figure out how much hydrogen there was. If I know how much carbon dioxide was made, I can figure out how much carbon there was. Um, and then the excess oxygen leaves. So the excess oxygen leaves. So how do we figure out where each element went? Well, for carbon, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, we know that all the carbon in our sample went to the CO2. We know that all the hydrogen in our, in our sample went to H2O. But the oxygen could have came from one of two places. It could have came from our compound, or it could have came from the excess oxygen that we were reacting to it. So do I know if that oxygen came from the compound or if it came from the, the excess. So did this go here or did it go there? Does it only do one? Does Do they take turns? Who knows? How are we going to figure it out? So the way we figure it out is we're going to look at this way. So carbon, again, we can get from the CO2, hydrogen from the H2O. The oxygen, well, first we get the carbon and the hydrogen. Then we subtract it from our original sample. Because I know, let's say I started with 100 grams and I know that I, I made... Uh, you know, carbon dioxide, and I figured out that there was 50 grams of carbon in my carbon dioxide, and I figured out there are 25 grams of hydrogen in my water. Well, the rest of it would have to have been oxygen, right? So that's how we're going to figure it out. we got to get carbon and hydrogen first, figure out how many grams of each those were, and then go, hey, I know how much of my sample I started with, how much oxygen was there. So you do as you normally would. One, determine how much carbon there was by analyzing CO2. Remember, grams of CO2 to moles of CO2 to moles of carbon. Determine how much hydrogen there was by analyzing the H2O. Same thing, grams of H2O to moles of H2O to moles of hydrogen. And then you got to find the mass of the carbon and the hydrogen. There's like this additional step that you got to do. You got to convert them into grams. So once you have those masses, uh, you can determine the mass of oxygen present in your sample. You'll always be given the starting mass of your sample in these problems. That'll always be given to you. So remember, the mass total has to be the mass from the carbon and the mass of the hydrogen and the mass of the oxygen. So if we're solving for mass oxygen, just kind of rearrange that a little bit, right? Then you've got to convert the mass oxygen to moles of oxygen, and then you do the last step, which has always been the last step. Divide by the smallest number of moles among the carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and that'll give you your empirical formula. All right, so game plan. Moles and grams of carbon. And then moles and grams of hydrogen gives us, we can figure out grams of oxygen, get moles of oxygen, Get the empirical formula by dividing the smallest number of moles, and that's it. So let's take a look at an example. It says a 0 0.2500 gram sample of a compound known con to contain carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So that's telling me that, hey, I know it's going to be this kind of problem. Undergoes complete combustion to produce that much carbon dioxide and that much H2O determine its empirical formula. All right, so let's start with carbon. So to figure out carbon, i got to look at how many grams of H2O were made. So point 3664 grams of CO2 were made. So I want to get moles of CO2. So mole of CO2 is 44.01 grams of CO2. So now I've got my moles, right? The grams will cancel out. I got my moles of CO2, and then I convert it to moles of carbon. So I know that I get one mole of carbon for every mole of CO2 because it's CO2. There's only one carbon right there. So I plug and chug that, and I get 0 0.008325. Moles of carbon. Now, let me go back and do hydrogen. So hydrogen, 
same process. I got to take a look at the H2O this time. There is 0 0.1500 grams of H2O. And I'm going to need to use the gram formula mass so I know that one mole of H2O is 18.02 grams of H2O. My grams cancel out. I got moles of H2O. I convert that to moles of hydrogen. So I know I get two moles of hydrogen for every one mole of H2O. The moles of H2O cancel out. I'm left with my moles of hydrogen, which is what I need. And I get 0 0.01665 moles of my hydrogen. All right. So now if there wasn't oxygen, I could jump to my last step and get the empirical formula. But there is oxygen, so I need to do a little conversion. I need to get grams of carbon. So I'm going to have to times this by the gram formula mass of carbon, which is at 12.01, which tells me that I have the equivalent of 0 0.09999 grams of carbon. And i got to do the same thing for hydrogen. I times it by its formula mass, which is at 1.01. And I get a slightly different number, 0 0.01681 grams of hydrogen. So now to figure out oxygen, I got to go, hey, I know my whole sample had to have been 0 0.2500 grams. And that's going to be the carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So now I have to subtract the grams of carbon and the grams of hydrogen. So subtract 0 0.09999 grams of carbon and the 0 0.01681 grams of hydrogen. And when I do that, I get a total mass of oxygen to be 0 0.1332 grams of oxygen. Now I got to convert the grams of oxygen to moles. So I got to divide that by, you know, one mole of oxygen is 16.00 grams of oxygen. And I'm going to get moles of oxygen to be 0.008325. So now I can do my last step. Divide by the smallest number, which is this 0.008325. So I divide every, every moles by 0.008325. For carbon, that gives me 1. For hydrogen, it gives me 2. And then this one is obviously going to give me one again. So my empirical formula will be C. I have one of those. Hydrogens, I got two of those. And oxygens, I got one of those. So it's CH2O. It is a carbohydrate, right? Carbon, water, carbohydrate. All right, well, I don't think that was sufficient. Let's do another example. It says quinine, used in the dye industry and in photography, contains only carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So that and oxygen is telling me that I'm going to have those additional steps. What is the empirical formula of the compound if you find that 0 0.105 gram of the compound gives you 0.257 grams of CO2 and 0 0.035 grams of H2O when burned completely? All right, so same process. So let's figure out uh, carbon. So where's my pen at? There we go. So carbon, we got to look at the CO2. So I got 0.257 grams of CO2. I'm going to have to use the formula mass again. So I know that one mole of CO2 is that 44.01 grams of CO2. Grams of CO2 cancel out, and then that times it by one mole of carbon for every one mole of CO2. So moles of CO2 cancel out, I get uh, just moles of carbon, and that tells me that I got 0 0.00584 moles of carbon. Now to figure out hydrogen, I got to look at the H2O. So H2O, it says I have 0 0.0350 grams of H2O. So I'm going to have to use the formula mass for H2O, which I know it's one mole will give me 18.02 grams of H2O. And I put, put the grams on the bottom because I need the grams to cancel out. So grams cancel out. And I'm left with moles of H2O. Now i got to convert that to moles of hydrogen. So I know that I get two moles of hydrogen for every one mole of H2O because it's H2O. So moles of H2O cancel out. I'm left with just moles of hydrogen, which comes to be 0 0.00388 moles of hydrogen. 
And now again, I need grams so I can figure out the oxygen. So I convert the moles of carbon and I times it by the GFM at 12.01 and I get grams to be 0 0.0701 grams of carbon. And then I do the same thing for oxygen. I times it by its formula mass at 1.01 .01 grams per mole and I get a 0 0.00392, 0 0.00392. 392 grams of hydrogen. Now to figure out the oxygen, I go, hey, my whole sample was 0 0.015. So I know 0, 0.0, I'm sorry, no, 1.105 grams of the whole thing was carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So I'm going to have to subtract the grams of carbon, which I found to be 0 0.0701 grams of carbon, and the grams of hydrogen, which was 0 0.0. 00392 grams of hydrogen, and what I'm going to be left with is just grams of oxygen. So I do that math, I get 0 0.0310 grams of oxygen, and now to get moles of oxygen, I got to, you know, times it by 1 over the 16.00 grams, because one mole of oxygen is 16.00 grams, and I get a mole number of 0.0. 0.00136 moles. So now to figure out the empirical formula, I got to look at all the moles. So here's a mole, there's the moles, and there's the moles, and I got to divide it by the smallest number of moles. And the smallest number is going to be that of oxygen, the 0 0.001936. So I'm going to divide, whoops, everything by that. So divide by 0 0.001936. For carbon, that gives me almost exactly 3. For hydrogen, when I do that division of 0 0.001936, I get almost exactly 2. When I divide it by itself, it's obviously going to give me 1. So my empirical formula is going to be C3H2O1. And that is my empirical formula. And that's how you do that. So, summarize. What is combustion analysis and how does it work? How do you determine the moles of carbon? How do you determine the moles of hydrogen? How do you determine the moles of oxygen? And how do you determine the empirical for formula once you have that stuff? So that's what you should be able to do. I hope you found that helpful. I'll see you in class. All right. Okay, bye.